In today's video, we're gonna be talking about 10 of my favorite best accessories for instant photographers. And these work with Polaroid and Instax. So let's, uh, let's get into it. I'm just another Chris. So maybe you're looking for something to spice up your instant photography shooting, or maybe you're just looking for a gift for an instant photographer. Look no further, I got you covered. Here's 10 of the best things that I use pretty much every single day. And some of the stuff that you're about to see, I've done full in-depth reviews on. So you can check the links in the description below, not only to purchase this stuff, but also dive even deeper with some of the videos that I made. So first thing on my list is this really cool thing that I discovered this year, and it has been a massive game changer, and that is a photo bag. Well, it doesn't really have a name, so I guess that just defaults it to Pola Bag. That's just what everyone does. They like to slap Pola on anything to do with instant photography. <laughs> So here are my Polo bags. And the best thing is they're super inexpensive. You get three of them, I think for $10. But really the one you're after is this one right here. And what makes this so great is that would you have a spot to slide in photos while you're out shooting? It keeps them in the dark, keeps them off of your body. So if it's warm outside, you don't want these pressed up against your pocket, like in a shirt pocket, that's what I'm referencing. And the heat from your body will transfer to the photo and causes your photos to turn magenta. Polaroid only that is. It's lightweight, super durable. I've been using it all year and it looks brand new. It has a clip. Yes, that is very important because you can clip this to the bag you are using. You can clip this to your belt, whatever you really want. And it will also help prevent them from getting bent while development. Sometimes if you slap them in your bag, you're moving around. They could get jostled and bent and curved and you don't want anything to happen to that or something pressed inside of it. Now they come in a three pack and I really just wanted to buy one, but you can't. But actually it's kind of a cool thing because when I'm traveling, I like to bring all three, but you, for you, probably you'll just need two of them. So I travel a lot for work and other things. I'll go out, shoot at the end of the day and all the photos get transferred to the bigger bag. This one just stays in my hotel room or wherever I'm staying, it stays in my camera bag, all in one spot. This one gets emptied and goes out and shoot the next day. Now, the third one I like to do is I store all my receipts because most of the time when I'm traveling it's for work. So I keep my receipts for tax purposes. So put all the receipts in another bag. I'm nice and organized. And the best part is it's so cheap. These are like $10. You get all three of them. They're nice. They're canvas. They're super durable. Highly, highly recommend them. The next thing up on my list, that is the power bar from Chromatic Parts. And the power bar comes in two types of flavors, one for the manual focus, like the original SX70, and then one for the SX70 sonar cameras. I recommend getting the sonar one, if you have a sonar that is. The reason is, you can take a regular old SX70, I know this one doesn't really look like a regular old one, but let's say it is, and you just take this and you put it in, that's it. Now you can shoot eye type film. Yeah, it powers the camera so you can use iType film in your SX70 cameras. But the reason I recommend this one is you don't have to modify your camera at all. It just plugs and plays, good to go. Now, you will have to use an ND filter over the pack of your film because your camera is set for SX70 film, so the speed difference is not gonna match up. So just throw an ND filter on there and you're good to go. Unless you have your camera converted to shoot 600 film, which I highly recommend, and also Chromatic Parts does that. Too. So that's an option. These are really great, super awesome, handy things. I actually use quite a bit. Again, more so the S, power S. S stands for sonar. All right, next up, it is a sling bag. It is perfect for instant photography. This guy right here. This is the Business King. It's kind of a generic naming camera bag, but I spent a long time tracking down purchasing bags to find the best one. And that's because most of these sling bags aren't really for camera use. So they're not padded. They're just like canvas ones. I know Retrospect even made a bag a couple of years ago but it wasn't padded, it didn't protect your camera. This thing is padded like a camera bag. <laughs> yeah, this thing is really cool. And the best part is it's like $16. I've been using this thing for three years now and it barely has any wear on it. And I have traveled everywhere with this. It'll fit SX70 cameras the best just because of how form fitted it is. It's very thin, but it will also fit most insects cameras. You can do minis and squares, no problem whatsoever. The wide cameras can be a little bit funky, but they will fit in here. It's just, they're gonna be a little bit more bulky. Now it won't fit Polaroid box type cameras, unfortunately, but it'll fit the Go perfectly fine. But the reason I really like it is, again, it's padded. It has some internal pockets, but the best part of this bag is 
the front pocket right here. You fit an extra pack of film in there or use it for your photos that you've taken. But what I like to do is pair this with the clip bag that I showed you earlier. Right here on the strap at the bottom, you can take this clip and clip it right to the bottom. And that's what I like to do. Yeah, it's awesome. And so when you're shooting, you just shoot your photo and then you just reach down and then you just grab it, slap it in, zip it, good to go. Such a great combination. And then again, I can't stress this enough. Not even expensive, super, super cheap and phenomenal. I'm gonna throw an honorable quick mention. I've been testing this bag this year. Um, I haven't done a video on it yet because I wanted to make sure if it's you know good or not. And so far, it's pretty dang good. But this is also um, a sling bag, but it's got more pockets. You can fit a lot more stuff. You can fit the box cameras in here perfectly. Uh, and it's a really cool bag. It's a little bit more expensive. I think this was like 40 bucks. Still not that expensive, but in comparison to the other bag that's under 20, yeah, I guess so. And I will be doing a video on this very soon, but if you want to get one ahead of the review, I'll leave a link in the description. Number four, and that is RGB slash pocket lights. These things come in handy. Oh my gosh, this is so cool. And plus you can do some really fun, creative lighting tricks with RGB lights. For instance, like what I'm doing right now. Look at that. That's a little pocket light. It's one of these. And they're not just RGB. They've got regular daylight and tungsten light. Fit in camera bags. You don't even know they're there, but when you need them, you're glad they're there. Again, though, prices range wildly. So I'm going to leave my favorite ones in the description below. All right, number five. I recommend getting yourself a tripod. Pocket one, travel one to be specific. And I actually recommend the Switch Pod. Now, it's not cheap. Uh, it's fairly expensive. It's around $100. That's without a ball head. I recommend getting a ball head and I have some recommendations for that as well for some honestly actually really inexpensive ones that are better than the expensive ones. It's around 20 bucks for one of those. Switch Pod though is so so nice. I'm not sponsored by them but technically I kind of work for the inventor. Sort of. He's one of my clients. <laughs> Kind of worked out that way down the line anyway the switch pod is really cool because it's thin this isn't the one i travel with i forgot to grab the one i actually travel with but i have a much 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 smaller ball head that is the thickness of the uh, switch pod itself and traveling with this thing is a breeze look how thin it is and then when you need it you just flip it out and now you have yourself a tripod but the cooler thing about this is it has mounting points on the side you can it's quarter 20 thread you can thread on microphones or lights folds up and you can clip this to your bag it doesn't take up hardly any room really nice but it is expensive it's 100 bucks next up straps honestly i don't really use straps because i don't like them or i haven't liked them over the last several years especially in the digital world I just rip those things off and I never use them because they just hurt my neck. They're just, they scratch. They're just awful. Polaroid end up making a quite nice one. And that is this guy right here. This is their like paracord style. It is so soft. It's right. It's round. It's not going to really itch your neck or scratch it up. This thing's really nice and super inexpensive. They're like 10 bucks, 15 bucks or something like that. I love them. They have a quick release. Oh, look at that. You can take it on and off. It's really cool. I wouldn't recommend this with heavy cameras, but they do work with SX-70 cameras. I also will leave links to buy up these little extra little clippy clips. That way you, you only need to buy one strap and you can just transfer that back and forth without having to like try and be annoyed on getting this thing off, on and off. So next straps. I love the paracord ones. Next up, lenses. Oh, yes. I love this thing. Okay. So not a sponsor, but earlier this year, a uh, retrograde engineer sent me a bunch of his stuff. They were cool and I did videos on it because I've actually been using his stuff for a long time. Mostly this right here. This isn't the SX 37 lens mount for SX 70 cameras. It has a 37 millimeter thread so you can thread on lenses. Now this year he implemented extra adapters for NSAX cameras and other Polaroid type cameras, which is really cool. And if you want to check out the video I did on it, there's a link in the description, but I recommend these. They come in and out of stock and he even has some extra fun stuff. If it hasn't come out yet, it's coming very soon, depending on when you're watching this video. So be sure to follow him and check out what he's got. You get some freaking sweet shots with these lenses and adapters. Scanning your images. Yes. And then my scanner of choice is the Epson ES60W. We live in a digital world, but yet we like to shoot analog format. How do you share your photos in that sort of situation? Well, you have to scan your photos and you have to put them online. So I recommend this guy for a lot of reasons. One, look how 
compact and travel friendly it is. It even has a built-in battery. It connects to your phone. So if you're shooting with your friends, you could scan them and share the photo right there with them on the spot. They can get a copy of it. It also connects to your computer, which I do recommend because you get some higher resolution scans. There's only a couple downsides to it. Um, it does get some dust in there. So you have to make sure you kind of clean it or get a special case for it. I'll leave links to that as well. It's super cheap. But for the price, this is about $140, which seems expensive, but not. it's not when it comes to scanners. Uh, the next equivalent up from this is 500 bucks. And then that, even that's kind of a mid-range one. The next one up is about $700. So yeah, this is actually pretty cheap. <laughs> and the results are quite nice. If you go check out my Instagram and you go back to like 2021, I think it is, all my photos have been scanned with this. It's quirky, you do have to practice with it a little bit. It's not perfect, but it does a good job storing your photos. So I wanna talk about some albums. More specifically, just two albums. And honestly, Polaroid makes the best albums. <laughs> and also, fun fact, it will fit in Stacks wide photos too, because Polaroid photos are nearly identical to the same size insects why but unfortunately there's not a ton of amazing options out there for instax like mini and square photos um you kind of just have these which are fine they're not amazing nothing to brag about but they're still pretty nice but they make them for wide as well as square and the cool thing is they are pretty inexpensive pretty cheap polaroids are 20 bucks uh sometimes they run sales i know during like black friday they uh they ran a deal that were $13, which is pretty sweet. Polaroid does have another size down from this. I recommend getting the large one, they call it. Uh, and this is my album from 2021. Every year I do a live stream and I pick my top 120 photos, because that's how many of these hold Polaroid photos that is, my favorite ones. I do a live stream where I build out my album of my favorite photos I took that year. This year's is gonna actually be kind of different because I started to take my favorite ones and actually frame them or put them up on walls or do something fun with them. So they're not gonna be a totally perfect representation of my favorite photos in an album. But if you wanna see that, be sure to subscribe. But lastly, is I'm talking about pens. <laughs> yeah. We all know the Sharpie is our best friend when we're shooting his photography to write on or sign them or whatever. But I've actually done a fair share of, of testing and research on finding like a, an extra pen you should be carrying around with you. Something I really, really have enjoyed. And that's these right here. This isn't Sharpie. This is a permanent marker though, but this is by Bic. And it is the Intensity. I love these freaking pens. I believe they also come in blue. This is their black version, or should I say tuxedo black? But man, they are nice. They're super fine point. They were great for signing, like if you're writing on the front of your photos, if you're into that sort of thing. I wouldn't recommend them with uh, Instax, like writing on the back of the photos, because most of the time when I'm writing on my photos, if I'm not signing them, because I do um, monthly photos for uh, Patreon members, I will sign them. But uh, if I'm shooting for them myself, I like to write them on the back. These work perfectly. Oh, so, so nice for writing on the back of Polaroid photos. Super smooth, ultra fine. I love them. Get yourself some. So there you have it. Those are some of my top 10 favorite things, the best that I've used this year and I recommend for you guys to check out. And be sure to check the links in the description because I not only put all these in there, I've also put in some of the extra things that I like to use. There's a little bonus thing. So if you wanna check that out, get down there, pick yourself up some. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Now, get out there, make some art.